Hello everyone. Today I'd like to talk to you about one of the possibilities to use those paintings that, well, they failed. They just didn't turn out the way we wanted them. For some reason, people are very, very reluctant to flip their watercolor paper over and work on the back side. And I understand that the texture is different and on some papers the quality might even be a little bit different. But if you're using a good paper, uh, arches or something similar to that, both sides are suitable. And frankly, I, I use the backs of all my failed paintings, which I have stacks of, to do my studies, my warm-ups. If I was a musician, they might be my chords and my daily warm-ups. For me, they're small landscape studies that let me know possibilities and explore options and explore ideas. This is taking it a step further than just a simple sketch, but I'd like to talk to you today and demonstrate how I do this. You see here I've done three different ones, and here I was primarily interested in clouds and the shadows they cast on distant mountains. On the bottom one I was interested in the drama of dark against light, of a summer stormy sky. And on this little vertical, I was interested in these cast shadows of fir trees, pine trees, coming across the snow, and a hiker has hiked up into here and is standing looking off into the distance. And so I wanted to explore possibilities and ideas. Don't be lazy, though, when you create these. And when I mean lazy, what I mean is, Go ahead and work on your brush strokes, work on your textures, work on your edges. You can see here I was interested in controlling the edges of these clouds. Here I was interested in texture. Here I wanted to create drama between light and dark pattern. These are actually areas to learn and to explore. And if you do these daily, maybe the back of one failed painting, and you do several, then I believe you're going to improve. And the other thing is, this is an opportunity to have fun, to cut loose a little bit. Notice I don't mask off the edges. I'm not interested in perfection. I, I'm just simply painting. So let's set this one aside. And I'm using my 3 quarter inch plywood board that I use outdoors as an easel. You can see it's got the water stains from many a painting. Here's a, a failed, the back of a failed painting. I'm just going to pin this down at least a couple edges anyways with the thumbtacks. And in order to get my formats and to get my formats quickly, what I recommend is that you save a postcard out of the mail. This is the, looks like the San Diego Watercolor Society postcard that they mail out. And what I like about this is it gives me a standard size. So I can lay that down, I can trace around the edge, and it gives me a standard format that replicates approximately the same proportions of the watercolor paper that I like to use and the sizes I like to use. You could custom make one of these to fit your own personal preferences if you have proportions that are different. I just happen to like this. It was recommended to me by another artist friend and I, I've always used it. I might do a sheet of all horizontal landscape format or I might do all portrait format if I find myself doing all of one and not another, then I may force myself. Uh, but what we're going to do today is we're just going to try a couple of uh, designs. Maybe we'll do one landscape format and, and one portrait format. And just give you a little quick demonstration of how that might go. So using no reference, just kind of going out of my mind, Maybe I want to work on a sky. I'm going to use a third of my format 
to be the land. And I'm going to use two thirds to be sky. or something approximately like that. So a simple sketch, and then I'm going to go ahead, and on this one, I'm going to wet the entire sky. Now I've tinted the water slightly, so that hopefully you can see it a bit. It should be appearing a little bit of a blue-green uh, color. Hopefully that helps you to see on camera a little bit. I know I've got a long ways to go to improve my quality of my videos for you all, but for now this is what I'm what I have to work with, so maybe we can get an effect that you'll you'll like. And I'm gonna go with a dramatic sky here. I'm gonna try to go darker with the sky than anything else that's gonna be in this entire painting. So I'm gonna mix up a phthalo, a phthalo blue. and a cad red medium or something similar to get a really nice dark blue. And remember in watercolor when you put it on the paper if it looks right it's going to dry wrong. So you want it darker than what you think you want when it dries. Because if you don't do that you're going to be disappointed because it's always going to dry lighter. So in my mind, this is some sort of a winter stormy sky. And maybe it's darkest at top and it's going to get a little bit lighter as it comes down. So this is just clean water that I just applied. Or near clean water. Just to help and assist the run down towards the landscape where I did not dampen the paper. And yeah, I'm covering a lot of my drawing. That's okay. These are just simple studies. I'm coming back in with a little bit of dark wash again, just to reinforce and strengthen. Maybe I'll even come through there with a, a little bit of cloud action below those clouds. And before that runs too much, I think I want to freeze it. And by freeze it, I do mean the hairdryer. So you may want to mute the sound on your computer for just a second as I blow dry this. So as you can see, it did dry significantly lighter than what it was. You can see that when I, when I used the dryer, I froze the action of the drip that was coming down, and I got these lovely little soft effects that, that read as a sky. Now, I love that soft effect back there. Now, building from the distance to the foreground, we're going to go ahead and work in the mid-distance here. In my imagination, these are mountains or these are hills. I'm going to stick with a similar color, the phthalo blue, except this time I'm going to use very, very little of the red inside of that, just enough to barely gray it. And I'm going to use a, a, a fairly dry surface and a brush that is just damp. And I am going to drag that brush along the paper and leave some sparkle. A little bit of white sparkle of the broken edge of the paper and the paint to replicate snow. 
Now I'm going to go back into my mix. And remember, the sky is going to be my darkest element. So I have to control my paint and my mixtures to make sure that that is the case. So while that paper is still slightly damp, I can come back and I can add faint and distant effects that are going to look like trees. Again, a sketch. Not really concerned about too much detail. Honestly, not that concerned about the way it turns out. Might be a failure, but it's going to be a failure on the back of an already failed painting. So in my mind, that's really not a failure. You'll notice I had those damp trees and then I came back in with a vertical stroke on the tip of the brush to give them some form to look like trees. That's all I did there. To continue the, the feeling of snow and the concept of snow, I'm going to go with a very light wash. And I'm just going to drag that brush to get that broken effect again, the sparkle of the paper showing through. And perhaps this is a frozen river. That, that could easily work. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to introduce uh, the light pine trees against that dark sky. How am I going to do that? You say, well, the trees need to be darker if they're going to show up against that sky. Mm -hmm. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take clean water or nearly clean water, and I'm going to do a lift. I'm going to lift parts of the sky off to indicate the top of my trees. Again, a little bit of practicing of a technique on these simple studies on the back of a failed painting. And I just want to keep emphasizing this was a failed painting and, I, and I'm just trying and practicing. So I'm going to come in with something warm. This is very cool. So I'm coming in with a cad orange uh, mixed with the phthalo blue. And I'm going to introduce that, that green on there. And now I'm just going to come in and shape these trees in the foreground. I'm going to come back and add a little more warmth. get these to pop off of the background a little bit more. Mainly this is because of color temperature, warm against cool, that we're going to be able to detect any kind of difference whatsoever. If you leave a little of the background show through, you're going to get a little bit of a snow texture effect coming through those trees as well. And that can be quite nice. That can be very desirable. To finish this little study, I think I'll just take a bit of a snow shadow color, a blue or a slightly blue-gray, and run a little bit of shadow away from those trees, and a little stronger shadow along the edge of what I've decided is some sort of a riverbank. That's enough for that study. It was really about, can I get a dark sky and have everything else be lighter? Can trees show up against a dark sky if I use just color temperature? That's it. Maybe that gives me an idea for a future painting. Maybe it doesn't. If nothing else, it was, it was practice. The next one, let's take a look at and let's do a vertical. Let's do a vertical format. And let's do... Um, 
something where we have, perhaps we're going to have dramatic mountains, something perhaps like the Tetons. in the distance and then maybe we'll have a row of trees back here distant hillside and then bushes and a small sliver of land below to really emphasize this is now two-thirds land and the small strip of a third of sky. Let's really emphasize a simple sky and let's emphasize those mountains. For this technique I'll show you a way that I paint mountains where I bring the sky color all the way down into the mountain. I'm going to do something unexpected. We're going to try something unexpected since this is just practice. We're going to go with a yellow sky. Even in a small format like this, it's important to vary your washes. So we're going to make this side over here a little bit warmer. I added a little bit of cat orange to a what was ochre wash. I'm coming all the way down the mountain, even into the tree line a little bit. I'm going to warm this up even more and let that come down. Why am I not concerned about coming down into the rest of this? In my mind, I've already decided that's going to be darker. This area is going to be darker, so it doesn't matter if that comes down or not. So as that starts to dry, I'm watching it, and I'm watching it granulate a little bit. I, I like that. I don't want clouds in this sky. I want to keep it super simple. I'm going to be thinking about complements. That's a little bit of an orange, orange-yellow. So maybe a, a blue, an ultramarine blue for the mountains might be nice. Again, you might want to mute your sound. I'm going to be using the blow dryer for just a quick second. I know that's loud and that's probably annoying. But I want to do, it's important for me that I do these things live in real time for you. And I'm not cutting away and uh, doing any camera tricks whatsoever. This is about painting for me. Uh, I just want to show you guys some technique and, and, and paint. That's all I'm after here. The effect we're going to go for this time is we're going to go with a, a simple uh, mountain. I might leave a little bit of the underpainting show through to give a little bit of form, but not too much. I'm going to go with pure ultramarine. We're going to see what happens. Pure ultramarine blue. If I'm going to have anything show through, I've already decided it's primarily going to be on this, this main mountain. And you'll see I'm leaving just a little bit of the yellow show through in a few places. Maybe this is the last remnants of snow left up there. Or if we are in Tetons, maybe this is the glacier. They have glaciers there in the Tetons that uh, are year-round permanent residents of the mountain. I understand they are shrinking a little bit, but they're still there. I was up there last fall and was painting on location and and actually saw that. So you can see it's really quite effective to show that little bit of mountain through and it, it unifies and ties these things together well. So that that is it. That, I'm going to leave that alone. And, and while that's still a little bit damp, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to come in with a dark wash of a phthalo blue and a red. 
and I'm going to make my dark is going to be in this area right here. So while that's a little bit damp, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to run conifer or fur shapes up into that damp wash so that I have an edge that gets a little bit lost. I can always come back and sharpen those edges if I so choose. But I'm now even going to go darker with my mix. Not as dark as I can possibly mix what, what I and my mentor David Rankin refer to as near dark. Same, same colors, a phthalo and a red. Just much darker this time. Remember, these things are going to dry lighter. Let's leave a little bit of, of light showing through. Let's lay this brush on the side now. Okay. If this bothers you, where that got a little bit clunky, you can increase the height of those trees. Maybe they're on a hill. Like that. That's fine. I actually like that uh, shape. And then this very simple foreground. Maybe there's uh, shrubs back there. These could be willows along a river. They could be um, sagebrush. Whatever you want to make them. I'm just going to I'm just going to go with a warm again, a warm green, along there, and then I'm going to come back with my dark mix. And I'm going to let it mix in to that dampness. I'm playing. I, I'm exploring possibilities right now. Maybe I want to make a, a lead in with that nice damp wash. Just the tip of the brush. Just uh, see what happens here. Let's take the side of the brush, let's drag it up. 